Is having steak really a mistake? When it comes to the best source of iron that you can get, I think this question is worthy of being answered in an objective and an evidence-based manner. And that's what I'm going to do for you in this video. When it comes to food ingredients, there are these two categories of food ingredients that I hear constantly from people who come to seek my opinion. One is how can they get more protein in their diets? And the second is how can they make sure they are getting enough amount of iron? And I'm going to be talking about how can we maintain a healthy source of iron that provides us with long-term health and wellness. So I'm going to be comparing these two sources. One is a plant-based source, which is spinach, and the other is steak. Now, I'm going to be giving you three points of information, which is evidence-based and does not have any of my personal opinions into it. See, when we look at spinach and steak, what is the amount of iron that is present in each one of them, we need to understand what does an adult human being need. Now, as a healthy adult, we need about eight milligrams of iron every day. Now, when it comes to pregnant women or women in that childbearing age group, their iron requirements may be slightly more. And we are talking about, you know, up to 20 milligrams on a daily basis. When you compare spinach with steak, and let's take 100 grams of each of them. Spinach has got 2.7 grams of iron, whereas steak has got 2.6 grams of iron. But the key thing is not just the amount of iron that is present in each of them, how much of this iron is available for the body to absorb is a very important factor as well. And this is what is called the bioavailability of any nutrition component that we talk about for any food ingredient. See, the plant-based source of iron is not very easily absorbed, whereas the animal source is coming in the form of heme iron, which is there in the blood. And that is absorbed relatively easily. I'll talk more about the heme iron later on in this video. But what is important is to increase the absorption of iron from plant-based sources such as spinach, you need to combine it with things like vitamin C, which is there in lemon juice or with olive oil and things like that. So that is what allows the iron to be absorbed from a plant-based source. But here is the second argument which starts to swing the balance in favor of maybe a plant-based source. And that is what is the good stuff and not so good stuff that is present in each of these categories. If you look at steak, for example, the good stuff is it's got iron in it, it's got protein in it, and it's got certain vitamins such as vitamin B12. But the sad part is the bad stuff is really worrisome. And there are three key bad stuffs which are there in steak, which I want you to know and which maybe the meat industry does not want you to know. So number one is this thing called as PAH, which is polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. What it is is basically when meat is heated, it is grilled, it is charred, it creates these compounds which basically create a carcinogenic acidic environment in the body. Several studies are proving that it is being linked to cancers of the breast, cancers of the prostate, and very importantly, cancers of the colon. Second thing that red meat has got is hormones. Now, all the animals that are raised in the farms are being given these hormones to hasten or to fast track their growth process. These are uh, estrogens, these are progesterones, and some of them are naturally present in animals. 
and the human beings are consuming these hormones. And the third is the antibiotics. Now, most of the farm animals are given antibiotics because they are raised in uh, unhygienic conditions. They have got infections which need to be treated. And the farmers tend to use broad spectrum antibiotics, which have got a residue in the flesh of the animal itself. This is what leads to a residual effect of these antibiotics is going to be experienced by human beings when we consume their flesh. But here is the interesting bit. Antibiotics are not just used to treat infections in animals, they are also used to make these animals grow fatter faster because it changes the gut bacteria of these animals and it causes them to gain weight quickly. On the other side, if you see the argument for spinach, Spinach has got some toxins only if it is consumed in large amounts, such as oxalic acid, which can lead to kidney stone formation, or it can create bloating in certain individuals. But mind you, these toxins are only going to affect you if you consume it in large amounts. The good stuff that spinach brings with it is things like vitamin A, E, B, and C. It has got several anti-inflammatory compounds, such as flavonoids or which are antioxidants which reduce the individual's risk of developing cancer and also it reduces the risk of developing high blood pressure plus spinach has got a large amount of plant-based fiber of course it is from a plant-based source which is good food for your gut health for your gut bacteria and the third argument or the third point of consideration is that the presence of this thing called as heme iron in animal sources. Now heme iron is something which is naturally present in anything that has got its origin from the blood. Now the good thing about heme iron is when you consume it, it gets absorbed fairly quickly. Plant-based iron on the other side does not get absorbed very quickly. That is to say that the body has an auto-regulating mechanism in order to control the iron levels. But what happens when you're having too much of this heme iron is that it gets stored in the body as ferritin. And if you're consuming a large amount of red meat, there is a good chance that you have got a high ferritin level. And high ferritin levels are associated with diabetes, with high blood pressure, with truncal obesity, and also coronary artery disease. But also what is important to keep in mind is that heme iron by itself is associated with a high risk of colorectal cancer, pancreatic, and lung cancers. So when it comes to choosing the best source of iron, it is my opinion that based on the evidence that is available, having a steak may be a mistake.